Welcome back to the channel guys. In the last video you saw with the CR250, we completely tore apart the suspension here to send out for coatings. And while those tubes are away, it's still gonna be about another two weeks before I get them back, we are gonna do some ceramic coatings on these parts. Now typically you would do anodizing on the upper fork tubes. Uh, that's what they come with stock, but I thought I'd switch it up and try Cerakote on these parts instead. Always been curious on how that would work out. Let's dig into it. Now to prep for Cerakote, this stuff needs to be bee blasted. So we'll be using this blast cabinet here. And a couple things to consider with that is you don't want to blast inside the fork tubes or the shock body. Both of those are anodized inside and blasting the anodizing will affect the performance of the fork. And then obviously the compression adjuster for the shock needs to be taken apart before blasting. And a couple other things to mask off for blasting would be the threads on the lugs as well as those on the shock clevis. Got everything ready to blast now. So the inside of the shock body is masked off. Same with the fork tubes. Stuffed a little tin foil in there just to keep the sand from tearing up the insides. Fork lugs are ready to go. And for the clevis, just plugged it with these silicone plugs. So let's get to blasting. Now the media that I'm using in this cabinet is an 80 grit glass bead. Not quite as aggressive as the aluminum oxide I was using previously but still will strip paint and leaves behind a good finish for the Cerakote to stick to. And it's a lot safer to use on these aluminum parts too. After a couple hours of standing at the sandblaster, this stuff is all ready to go. The last thing I'll need to do is take apart the compression adjuster to blast that never taken one of these apart before so we'll see how that goes all right from the looks of it we've got a nut on the back side i tried turning that and it just spins the whole assembly and then underneath the nut or like the back plate there's a circlip inside of there that thing is impossible to get out and so i was looking a little bit closer and it looks like there's actually two separate pieces here like two separate casings right here you can see a little bit of a gap there and so I think we should be able to split that apart somehow. And how I'm gonna do that is put as much pressure on the two halves as possible. I'll do that through turning the clicker all the way to the right. That'll put as much pressure on the compression adjuster internals as possible. And hopefully I can split these apart. Doesn't look like it's gonna come apart by hand. Maybe if I apply a little pressure with the nut on the back, these things will split apart. I'm just gonna go left with that nut. It looks like it's coming apart, sweet. All right, let's take a look inside. So we've got two separate halves here. Now this half we're not gonna have to worry about just because we're not doing any coatings on it, but I'm gonna pull it apart just because I've never had one of these apart at all. Looks like we've got a little washer inside of there, as well as this little needle. Looks like the needle has a little bit of wear on the tip here. There's like a lip on it. I'm assuming that sh probably shouldn't be there. So I'm gonna sand that down, get rid of that lip. Now the rest of this half is pretty straightforward. I'm not gonna take anything else apart there. And then we've got the part that I'm actually gonna coat. So I'm gonna push the internals out. Looks like we've got a couple little pieces here, a little roller pin. Pull that out, make sure not to lose that piece. Got a washer. This outer casing will be good to go. Just gonna pop the O-ring off. That will be ready to coat. And it looks like we're gonna have to take this thing apart a little bit further. So I've been checking this adjuster out for the last few minutes, trying to get it apart, and it doesn't really look like there's a way that it can come apart, or like trying to get the inners out. So what I'm gonna do is just strip the anodizing off and leave it bare. Obviously you can see anything you put on there is just gonna wear through anyways. So I think the best option is to just leave this bare and only coat the outer shell. And of course, you're gonna to wanna to mask off and plug the delicate surfaces that you don't want blasted. 
for the adjuster and needle. I'm gonna clean these up with the finer wheel on the bench grinder. After a little buffing, I'd say they turned out pretty good. Let's get back to some Cerakote prep now. Now that I've got everything bead blasted, the next steps are to clean this stuff up with Dawn dish soap, then soak it in acetone, and mask off some of these inner surfaces once again, then bake it through the oven to burn off any remaining contaminants, and then we can finally get to spraying the Cerakote. All right, I've got the fork tubes all masked off inside. Definitely do not want to get any Cerakote inside of there. Now, I've been contemplating on the color to go with on these tubes. It's between a silver, or like a titanium color, or a black. So this is kind of like silver, it's more like a gray. But let's see how it would look on the bike. I kind of like it. Dude, that's actually pretty trick. Reminds me of the factory Cowies that had that color for a while. And I think the, uh, the factory Honda CRT50s have the same color too. So not really a bad option, but I did some Photoshopping earlier and I always kind of preferred the black over the silver. Man, this is gonna be a tough choice. I don't know, maybe I'll just do one tube silver and the other one black. Yeah, the gray definitely isn't a, uh, a bad option. I think I'm gonna go with the black though. So how I hung the tube from the rack is by running a piece of wire all the way through the tube and then twisting it around the rack on either end. So the wire is the same wire used for wiring on grips. Alrighty, we are ready to spray some Cerakote. So now the question is, what exactly is the stuff called Cerakote? So it's a ceramic coating that's really popular in the gun industry, works really good in many other applications as well. So this is the color I'm going with, a cobalt. It's like a dark charcoal, really cool color. It's the same color we did on the XR80 exhaust. And this coating is really thin, and that's why we can use it on something like fork tubes where the tolerances going into the clamps are pretty tight. So yeah, that's pretty much the rundown on Cerakote. You just spray it out of an HVLP gun like this one here. You just do one coat, then bake it through the oven at 300 degrees for about an hour. And I wanna say you let it sit for about 24 hours before it's fully cured. And at that point, you've got a really good result that doesn't take a whole lot of setup. Honestly, you just need one of these guns like this one here, as well as a traditional oven that's dedicated to shop use. Now to get started, I'm gonna mix the Cerakote at a 12 to one ratio with the catalyst here. And since we're doing fork tubes, it's gonna take quite a bit of material. So I'm gonna do 36 milliliters of the Cerakote to three milliliters of the catalyst. Now you can mix this stuff at a different ratio to get different results. So 12 to one will give you semi-gloss, satin is 18 to one, and matte is 24 to one. I've always had the best luck with 12 to one ratio. You wanna shake up the Cerakote for a couple minutes, make sure it's all mixed together. Now you're gonna to wanna to find yourself a spare rubber Throw it over the top of the beaker here, and then mix up the Cerakote and the Catalyst. And into the gun we go. Now for safety equipment, you're gonna wanna wear some gloves, a respirator, a pair of safety glasses, and it's preferable to have some sort of ventilation system too. Alrighty, let's get spraying. The tube sprayed out pretty good, looks nice and consistent. So I waited about 15 minutes for that Cerakote to tack up, and now we're ready to drop it in the oven for a full hour at 300 degrees to cure it. Man, I am pumped with this color. Exactly what I was going for. I think it's the perfect mix between a black and a gray. So I'm gonna match the shock body and the clevis to the forks. Didn't wanna go over the top with the color on these parts. You know, nothing like a burnt bronze or say like a red or a blue. And I think the cobalt fit the bill perfectly. One thing that's always kind of bugged me about these forks is the fork caps. They're not quite up to my spec. So I'm gonna pull them out and give them some love with the scotch Bright wheel. Tell you what guys, it's all the little details that everyone else would overlook that really add up and make the difference in a build. Oh, 
Holy crap, this looks so much better. Just 60 seconds of buffing and it looks brand new again. I should have done that the first time around. But thankfully, I've already gone through this chamber, replaced all the bushings, seals, and oil previously. So I can just drop this cap right back in and call it a day. Oh, and one thing I forgot about is I have these works connection bleeder valves for the top of the cap. Replaces that crappy looking screw there. So they just have a little push valve on the top of it. Releases any air that gets into the inner chamber. So let's pop them on and see how they work. Heck yeah, it looks pretty cool. So when you build up air pressure in the inner chamber, you just push down the little button on top and that takes care of it. I will link these valves down below in the description. You know, something I just thought of that would be the meanest prank ever is if you tape down the valve on your buddy's bike and then he went and hit the track, I bet you on the first jump, all the oil from the inner chamber would just come shooting up right into his face. That would be pretty bad. He'd probably lose a friend over it. Just make sure you don't tell anyone I gave you that idea. So since I'll be doing the shock in cobalt, I think the burnt bronze would look really good as an accent color. So that is the color I'll be shooting all of these parts in. We are all finished up ceramic coating. Pretty pumped on how this stuff came out. I absolutely love that color combo with the bronze and the charcoal together. So I ran into a few little issues with the shock body. When I was spraying it out, I didn't have my gun set up the best, completely user error on my part. And I ended up with some dry spray here in between. And that happens when you don't have enough fluid coming out the tip. That's completely on the gun setup. And it ends up with like a weird texture so it's mostly in between here, not really a huge deal. I don't know if you can see that texture or not. But overall, pretty pumped on how this stuff came out and I cannot wait to get it all together. Now for you guys looking to do the same type of project, I will link these Cerakote colors I used down below in the description. They also have what seems like a million other colors over there on the Cerakote website. So you can really go through and just create your own masterpiece. I will also link all of the other supplies I use throughout this project down below as well. Now, as soon as I get the lower fork tubes and the shock shaft back from the titanium nitride coating, we are gonna get the suspension back together and I am so pumped for it. It's gonna be looking sweet. So make sure you guys hang in there for that. Appreciate you watching the video. Till next time, keep it prime.